everybody. My name is Jeff Belts. I'm uh, the principal owner of the Belts Law Firm. And I wanted to do this, uh, this video to try to help people understand driving while license and valid charges and driving while license suspended charges in Texas. Um, we're seeing a big uptick in the amount of uh, clients that are calling us with suspended license, license issues and not really understanding how, uh, how they got there. And, you know, the, the state of Texas doesn't do a really good job of educating people as to how the uh, traffic system works in Texas. And so we're seeing a lot of people make simple mistakes that have serious consequences uh, because of those mistakes. So I'm going to go over the basics as best I can um, to help you understand how to avoid driving while license and valid charges, uh, suspended license issues, and if you have a suspended license, what you need to do to... Uh, to make sure not to get arrested on that charge or to start driving legally. So um, we'll start off with the, the basic code section that outlines the law on driving while licensed and valid and suspended charges. That's contained in the transportation code. It's in section 521.457 and it's entitled driving while licensed and valid slash suspended. Um, in most cases what we see across North Texas at least is that driving while licensed and valid cases are being charged as class C misdemeanors. Um, so it's just like a traffic ticket, but it's a very expensive traffic ticket. Um, the average deferral fee when we protect a client's record for these type of charges ranges from the low end of about 350 to you know as high as $400 and above to protect a client's record on a driving while licensed and valid charge. I'll explain to you why that's still better than having a conviction on your record later, but um, you can see that the, the punishment range is, is very high on that. Um, now in certain counties in North Texas, Rockwall County being one of the, the, uh, the ones that, that does this the most is we're seeing a lot of Class B misdemeanors being charged for driving while license invalid. And what that means is that you're subject to as much as six months in jail and a $2,000 fine. For this type of charge. Now the way it, it enhances to a class B misdemeanor is you'll uh, get pulled over, your license is invalid for whatever reason, and you've already had a previous conviction for driving while license invalid on your record at the time. That can automatically be enhanced to a class B misdemeanor and in Rockwall County they're going to do that. Um, also if you get pulled over and for driving while license invalid and you didn't have insurance on the vehicle at the time, that also bumps it up to a class B misdemeanor. Now again in most counties uh, in North Texas you're not going to see that enhancement but it's there it's available for police officers to do so just make sure um, if your license is invalid uh, that at least you carry insurance on that vehicle and if you have a second driving while license invalid charge you really need to address why your license is invalid in the first place. All right, so how is a license suspended for driving while license invalid? Um, or how does a license become invalid in the first place? So most of the time what we're seeing is licenses become invalid in Texas for uh, traffic tickets. You'll, the biggest mistake we see without a doubt in my office are people that simply don't understand the value of hiring a lawyer for these types of cases. And they just run down to the court because they're busy or don't understand the significance of it, and they just pay the ticket off. Well, in Texas, under the Code of Criminal Procedure, Article 2714, what that does is that allows the court to, re to report it as a conviction on your record. When you make a payment to a court, you're waiving your right to appeal, you're enter entering a plea of guilty or no contest, and then at that point, the conviction gets reported. So you've got to stop doing that as a Texas resident. You've got to contest every single ticket. Now, when the conviction gets reported to, to DPS, that's where the problems really start. So the, the municipal courts or the Justice of the Peace courts report it to DPS. DPS then has a point system that overlaps those convictions. And if you get, for, li for example, if you get convicted of a driving while license invalid or a no insurance ticket, um, the surcharge for those is $750 way more than the fine. And so not only did you just run down and, and, and pay the fine, which is expensive, then you're going to get a bill from DPS saying, 
now we want $750 for you breaking this law. And that's on driving while license and valid charges. That's on no insurance tickets. And if you get a certain amount of moving violation tickets, that also creates a surcharge. So if you don't pay that, then your license becomes invalid. So you get the bill in the mail from DPS, you don't pay it, your license is invalid indefinitely until you do pay it. So now you're driving around with an invalid license and not even realizing that it's invalid. Um, so these convictions can cause both surcharges and suspensions depending on what type of uh, charge it is. So you, again, you have to be aware of that so that you take these things seriously because if you don't, if you just run down to the courthouse and pay it, you're really, really financially burdening yourself to the point to where we've seen clients have two, three, four, five thousand dollars worth of surcharges, suspensions for up to two years, indefinite suspensions. It's just really important important to understand how the how the system works so that you're not hiring me for an occupational license or to get you out of jail on a class B misdemeanor. You're simply hiring me for a ticket. Um, so again, how is a, a hard suspension created? Now, uh, there's two different types of, of reasons why a license can be declared invalid. Like you, you get a surcharge, you don't pay it. That's, that's one way uh, for your license to become invalid. But once you pay that surcharge, the, the invalid part of your license is lifted. It's, it's taken off. So even as bad as surcharges are, as long as you make that payment, your license will remain valid. But if your license is invalid, for not paying surcharges or for whatever reason, and you get pulled over again, or let's say you got pulled over in the past and you just didn't take care of a ticket, and you decide to go down and pay that ticket off, and it creates a conviction. If that conviction hits your record while your license was invalid for whatever reason, then DPS is really gonna lay the hammer down, and they're gonna suspend you for, it can be up to two years. So, typical situation I, I, I see a lot in the office is, License, license is invalid due to surcharges. Uh, they get pulled over, get a registration ticket or a no insurance ticket. They don't think it's a big deal. They go down and they pay it off. And because their license was invalid at the time that they paid that ticket off, then they get a letter from DPS saying that their license is going to be suspended for two years. Uh, I've handled three consults this week just on this issue. And so, if your license is invalid, I don't care if it's a registration ticket, I don't care if it's a seat belt ticket, whatever it is, I don't care if it was in the past and you just wanna take care of it now, you've got to contest that while your license is invalid because you do not want DPS finding out about a conviction during an invalid period. And that's just basically coming down to not properly handling your ticket. Um, you know, lawyers can go into court for you, even if the case is past due, or in warrant, lift the warrant, plead you not guilty, go into court, and in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, they can protect your record, and then you can go pay off the ticket, which saves you those surcharges, saves you uh, the suspended license. And, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll hear uh, people, even clients that we've had that didn't understand what we were doing for them or didn't pay attention to what we were doing for them, they'll come back and say, why wasn't my case dismissed? Why didn't? Why do I have to pay this? What, what did I use you for? And quite obviously, the bit, the main answer is we kept your butt safe. <laughs> we kept you out of jail, and we kept your driving record clear, and we kept it to where you didn't have to pay surcharges. Because in most cases, I'm not charging more than a hundred dollars uh, to take care of these types of cases. The surcharge alone, if it's $750, I just save that client $650 in surcharges for them using my service. So the value is always there when when uh, you need a lawyer to help you out. So even if you don't use a lawyer, you still need to go in and, and contest these the right way. So um, that's how a hard suspension is created. You, you've got to make sure that you're not letting convictions hit your record if your license is, license is invalid. Okay. So... The way I tell my clients when they come in and they sit down for the first time and they realize, oh my gosh, my license is suspended, how did this happen? The first thing I tell them is you gotta think of DPS as a strict parent. Think of them as a very rigid parent overlooking uh, your driving record. And if your license uh, is invalid, they basically said you're grounded. You're not supposed to be driving, you're grounded, 
you messed up, you're not going to be driving. And so if, if you think of them that way, a strict parent, and, and they're grounding you, then you've got to basically get back in their good graces so that you're not grounded, right? So that's why you can test every single ticket because if DPS is the strict parent, then these court systems are the tattletale brothers and sisters. And they're all over the place, right? Courts everywhere. And if you go in and you get a ticket in that jurisdiction, then you need to go in and go, hey, don't tell mom, DPS. Don't tell DPS about this. And there's, uh, you know, many ways you can do that. Driving safety course, deferred adjudication, straight out dismissals. Um, that's the main reason why educated, smart clients are hiring lawyers is because um, they understand the value of making sure that it's not reported on their record. So it, you got to make sure that these tattletale siblings, these, these courts, these tattletale siblings are not telling on you to DPS. Um, you've got to convince them not to tell on you. Um, and that is why protecting your record is so important. So, you know, honestly, we don't get every single case dismissed. And you shouldn't think that when you hire a lawyer. You're not going to get every single case dismissed that you hire the lawyer for. But the goal is if that case is not dismissed, at least make sure that it's not reported, not reported to DPS. And if your lawyer does that, then you have received a valuable service. That's how you should think of, of hiring a lawyer. Did you protect my record if the case wasn't dismissed? If so, then I got a value out of this. And you know, there's times where we, we're not even able to do that. I mean, I, I had a case in Plano Municipal Court where a client was going 30 miles an hour over in a school zone during school hours. And she was really upset that the prosecutor wouldn't offer her a deal to protect her record after hiring us. And, you know, I had to explain to her that she could have killed somebody, right? That's a, that's a very high speed. So what we're doing in that case is we're setting it for trial in the hope that it's dismissed because an officer doesn't show or because uh, the prosecutor doesn't have time to try it and decides to change their recommendation for deferred adjudication. But I had to explain to her that that's still not a guarantee on a speed that high. So um, luckily she came around to understanding that even if we're not successful, it's still worth the gamble. It's still worth paying the attorney's fees to take that risk because if that hits her record, it's going to have serious consequences on her insurance rates. And I'll talk to you about that here in a minute, what, what type of impact that has. So you don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish. And I say this a lot to clients when I'm trying to educate them about this, you know, when they're upset about not having their case dismissed. Is the savings at the courthouse steps on fines isn't the name of the game anymore. I mean, yes, I want to save every client as much money as possible. But if it comes between saving 20 or 30 or 40, 50 bucks at the courthouse steps or protecting their record, I'm always going to choose to protect their record because, again, the surcharges are going to be way more than they'll ever pay to, uh, to the court for a fine. So we need to make sure to protect the long-term financial security of the client. So you have to pay what you need to in order to protect your record and keep DPS from finding out about the offense. You just have to do it nowadays. Everything's just a click away. They click that button and report it to DPS. It doesn't come off your record. It's there permanently, forever. Now the points may drop off, but the record is there and prosecutors, especially baby prosecutors, new ones, I've seen them use convictions against a client where the convictions were 10, 15 years old. They were you know, teenagers and they messed up and they had a bunch of tickets and now they're 30 years old and uh, you know, they get a ticket, you know, general ticket and the, the, the prosecutor tries to use those types of records against them. You need to understand that you're creating a record that will be able to be viewed by prosecutors for the rest of your life. So the smart money is in, sa is in the savings by not having the conviction. And if we don't get your case dismissed, that's what you want to have happen. So what are the real savings? I mean, the value of protecting your record. First of all, your insurance rates. Now, what we normally see is when a record gets hit with a moving violation, especially a serious moving violation, which is anything 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. What we normally see on those is an increase of insurance rates by about $50 a month. Sometimes it's up to $100 a month, depending on how bad the record is. And so, you know, if you do the math on that, 
that ends up being about $1,800 over three years and up to $5,000 in five years in lost revenue. So if we've got to pay the court two or 300 bucks to save you anywhere from 1800 to $5,000 over five years, um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure to protect your record in that way. So, you know, uh, just be understanding about that if you do hire a lawyer, because I, I, you know, I see a lot of clients just not getting where the value is in protecting their record. So, and I, I keep harping on this because, you know, we've, I've, I had an argument with a client uh, this week that was really upset that we uh, got them deferred adjudication on a case to protect their record for $150. They paid us $75 to do that for them. And they were upset that they had to pay that kind of money, not understanding that we just saved them $1,800 on the back end. Um, it's, it's maddening to me to have to have that conversation over and over again. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to do it because every single client that understands that in the long run is going to save themselves a ton of grief if they get that through um, through their heads and, and understand it. But still, you can the client that I had that conversation with didn't get it, just did not understand it. Um, and you could have told him 10 ways from Sunday how much money you saved him and they just, he just wasn't gonna get it. So um, just make sure that when you're hiring a lawyer for this type of stuff, you don't, don't be penny wise and pound foolish about that. I mean, we're trying to get you the best deal every single time. And not every case is gonna be dismissed, but if we don't get your case dismissed, we're still having your best interest at heart. Um, now, other savings, again, are the surcharges. If that conviction hits, not only do you have the increased insurance rates, but you can be subject to the surcharge system. Um, you know, we see uh, if you got a no insurance and, say, a driving while license invalid, those are two separate surcharges, $1,500 that you just wasted. So if we're able to protect a client's record and they have to, say, pay $600 on those two cases to protect their record, that money is it's hard to it's hard to stomach that you have to pay a court that kind of money but you you have to understand that by doing that by following through with the deal that we get for you on that you're going to save yourself fifteen hundred dollars in a suspended license um, now again clients that that we've been dealing with mostly this week and the reason why i'm doing this video is because uh, I've probably done about seven consults for occupational licenses just this week and the biggest reason was due to not hiring a lawyer and just paying off their tickets and because it's income tax season this is where this happens the most is people will get their income tax money in they have a lot of warrants they need to get their license back and they're thinking if I pay off these tickets and I can go get my license and you know the my holds will be lifted and I can go get my license so they go and they pay off the tickets and they all get reported to DPS. They, they're thinking they're going to be able to go into DPS and get their license and DPS goes, wait a minute, now you owe us three, three grand and your license is suspended for, uh, for two years. And all of that money that they just spent at the courthouse steps is, is wasted money. So if that is you, if you're in a situation where income tax season has come around and you want to take care of your citations and they're past due the only way you can do that is for a lawyer to go in lift the warrants by posting an appearance bond setting a court date going in trying to get the cases dismissed and if not then negotiating payments based on the exchange of protecting your record don't just run down and pay that money thinking i don't want to hire a lawyer for this it's it's going to wreck your record. You're going to have to invest in your driving record to get it fixed if that's you. So um, now, if you've already done that, if you've already paid the tickets off that way, you know we'll deal with that. And that's what uh, this section is about: is understanding what it costs after your license is suspended. Now, your reinstatement fees through DPS is normally two hundred and five dollars and seventy-five cents if you pay it online. So you got to pay that first. Your filing fees in Dallas County um, are $267 to file for an occupational license if your license is suspended because you paid off a bunch of tickets. 
So you've got that investment. The attorney's fees are normally around $750, you know, give or take. Um, it's plus or minus depending on what attorney you use. We charge, you know, right around, we try to stay right around $1,250 total for our occupational licenses. And we're a little bit more expensive than some of the firms in town. I've, I've seen some attorneys charge more than that, $1,500 to $2,000. But we're at $1,250. And the reason why is because a lot of attorneys, they'll get you the occupational license order from the judge, hand it to you, and go, good luck. And people think, that that order is actually uh, their license and they'll hold on to it and they'll just keep it in their glove compartment going, well, I've got an occupational license. It's not true. The order is only good for 45 days. That order then has to be sent up to DPS with the proper reinstatement fees and the ODL fees and all these different types of fees that have to be sent up to them in order for you to then get a hard copy of your license in the mail. The same thing that I have in my back wallet. It's a, it's a it's a driver's license, and at the top of it, it says occupational. And if you do not get that from DPS, then you do not have an occupational license. So we charge a little bit more to make sure that we send off those documents for our clients, certified mail, uh, tracking the payments, making sure that the checks are cashed, making sure that the clients get the hard copy of their license in the mail, and then at that point, we close the file. So, uh, you know, just make sure that if, if you hire an attorney that hands you the order and says good luck, that you understand that there's other steps that you have to take at that point if they're not going to take them for you. So again, the reason why I'm creating this video before income tax season is because I want you to make smart money decisions. You, you want to be efficient with your money and uh, you just don't want to go down to the courthouse and pay all this money to courts and not get anything in return. So you need to make sure that you're contesting each citation as you get them. Don't think, well, I'm not going to fight this one. I'll fight the next one. I just don't have time to do it or, or whatever your reason is. Because you never, in North Texas, you never know when you're going to get your next citation. There's officers all over the road writing tickets all day long. So when you contest it, then you can go into court and get the best deal to protect your record. And don't get caught up in the amount that it takes to protect your record at the courthouse steps. Uh, that's probably the biggest complaint I see with clients is getting caught up in the amount that it took to protect their record when the real money savings is on the back end. Um, fines at the courthouse are still cheaper than surcharges, insurance rates, and a suspended license. And if I can help educate clients as to that, then it makes my job a whole lot easier when I'm trying to contest a 20 or 30 mile an hour over the speed limit and a client's screaming at me because they had to pay $300 to protect their record. First of all, that's a serious moving violation and we shouldn't be concerned about how much we have to pay to protect your record because if it hits your record, um, it's going to really mess you up. And so don't be worried about saving 20 or 30 or $50 at the courthouse steps uh, when the, the violation is one of those serious types like no insurance driving while license invalid, uh, high speed cases, uh, things like that. So, um, you know, again, I just want to see everyone out there start to understand this stuff um, so we can keep more money in our pocket and give less of it to the state of Texas, especially for things like this, um, because it's just, it's, it's lost revenue that you'll never get back. Um, you know, if you have a, tra a traffic ticket or a suspended license or an invalid license, feel free to call my office. We're happy to help you out with that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the phone number is listed on here. It's 214-321-4105. I'll be glad to sit down with you and review your record uh, personally if you decide to come in for a consult. All my staff is well trained to take care of this stuff as well. Um, hopefully you don't need us, um, but if you do, we're happy to help.